All right, hello everybody. Welcome to today's Wednesday webinar. We're going to be talking about uh, languages and cultures at Sydney. Um, and I'm very excited to be here uh, to speak for you and uh, to meet you, share information, hopefully have you joining us at the University of Sydney soon. So um, I suppose uh, I will share my screen and get started with today's um, uh, webinar. All right. Uh, I trust that you can all see that okay. And uh, so the title of today's webinar is Studying Languages at Sydney. Uh, and I'm going to answer three simple questions. How and why uh, and, of course, where it could take you. All right, so uh, I'm uh, Dr. Matthew Shores. I am in the Japanese studies uh, area, and I teach uh, Japanese language, uh, Japanese literature, culture, among other things. And of course, I am based in the School of Languages and Cultures. Uh, before beginning, I'd like to acknowledge um, that um, we uh, at the University of Sydney um, meet on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. And um, I'd like to acknowledge the tradition of custodianship and law of the country on which um, our university stands. I pay my respects uh, to those who have cared and continue to care for country. Um, I feel grateful to be uh, in Australia to work and live where I do. All right. So um, the first question, studying languages at Sydney, how? Um, there are really too many details uh, to give you in one go. Uh, there's there's a, a number of courses and, and many details. So we'll be posting links and providing uh, a number of um, good resources for you in the chat window. Um, I hope you'll follow up look at our, our website, contact uh, our administration, and indeed contact uh, some of uh, the teachers you might be interested in working with at the University of Sydney. Um, but how? Well, there are numerous uh, pathways to choose for all levels. You may uh, have studied already uh, a number of languages in high school or earlier. Maybe you speak languages at home. Maybe you've traveled with your family. Maybe you come from another country. Um, we have something for everybody at the University of Sydney. Um, and you can tailor uh, your course to, to suit your needs and your goals. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about some of the, the options that we have. Again, there are many details. Don't feel like you have to remember everything today, right now. You can always come back uh, for more information and, and certainly ask when you need guidance. Um, we have so many areas, and I'm, I'm sure that this is going to make you happy. Maybe you're interested in one, maybe you're interested in many, but look at all of these. Um, we have uh, languages and cultures from Arabic um, to, to Spanish. And of course, as I mentioned, I teach in Japanese, but we have many different offerings and you don't have to select just one either. There are uh, options, uh, pathways where you can take um, multiple languages and you don't necessarily have to major in one or minor in one. Um, based on your previous experience, um, say if you have no experience, if you're a complete beginner, or if you have a little experience, there's an introductory pathway, there's an intermediate pathway, and of course, if you have a lot of experience, there's an advanced pathway. Um, all of us come from different backgrounds. Um, in my case, I, I come from a family and I, I, that uh, was working class, and I was the first in my uh, family to go to university. Um, so I didn't really know what my goals were at first. I didn't know what I was getting into in, in university, um, but I soon uh, gained interest and, and, and developed goals. So whatever your background is, whatever your goals are, um, you can choose your goals um, if maybe if you want to get a major in a language and culture, or if you want to do a minor, or maybe you're doing something else. Maybe uh, you're studying medicine or sciences or engineering. Maybe you just want to do some electives, do a few units. Um, there are a number of 
uh, ways that you can achieve your goals. And of course, we want to help you do that. Um, sometimes it might seem as though um, uh, staff and academics at universities are too busy, or, or maybe we're just not interested in what you're interested in, but we're very keen on helping you achieve your goals. Um, when you achieve your, your goals, when you uh, go out into society and you're productive and, and you're making something of your life, that reflects on us too. It, and we're very interested in helping you pursue, pursue those goals. Um, Again, there are many ways uh, we can help you do this at the University of Sydney. Um, one example is um, uh, going uh, for a Bachelor of Arts or a Bachelor of, of Advanced Studies. Um, and in this, uh, there are options where you could uh, major in, uh, say, two languages and have a four-year program. Um, there's, um, you can learn practical multilingual skills and intercultural competence. Um, with um, our accredited courses. Uh, you can do two language majors at any proficiency level, um, and uh, you end with projects in the fourth year that have a real wor world impact. We uh, have students and guide students to complete projects that uh, contain original research. Uh, you could be working out in the community, uh, bettering um, the situation for certain groups. Um, there are any number of projects um, that uh, you can dream up and uh, we can help you pursue um, that do indeed have a real world impact and, and many of our students have indeed um, made an impact while students and also after they've, they've graduated. Um, this is a chart. Don't feel like you have to read everything here. I'll just draw your eyes to a couple of points here. Um, this is uh, a course, this is a bachelor of advanced studies. And in this uh, case, it's a four-year program. And as you can see, look here, the, the student uh, is majoring in German, and they've also decided to major in, in Chinese studies. So they're, they're doing two languages. And by the end of this course, they uh, are certainly highly fluent in two languages and proficient in not only the language, but the culture, because they're also taking a number of culture units that um, add to their education. And then of course, as I mentioned, there are these um, um, projects that are um, carried out at the end of the program. Of course, courses would change and be tailored for each individual student, but this is just one example. There are a lot of colors, a lot of uh, units that you see here. Of course, you don't do this in, in one day. You don't do this in one year. It, it's, it's over a, um, a number of years and you have guidance all the way. You work with um, academic advisors and somebody helps supervise your project. So you're, you're not alone when you're at the university, of course, we're here to help. Um, so the, another uh, uh, pathway is uh, the Dip Diploma of Languages uh, program. And this is a flexible uh, pathway program that allows you to um, take um, a number of languages, but you don't necessarily have to say minor or major in the language. Maybe you, you've always been interested in, say, studying and learning a bit of Italian. So um, there's, there's a, a way that you could also uh, take a language in addition to um, your, your uh, course of study. And uh, the diploma uh, is offered in any of our 15 languages. I showed you all of these languages earlier. So um, we offer diplomas in, in these areas as well. Um, for eligibility, well, we offer the diploma to um, uh, people who are enrolled in undergraduate degrees or combined degrees at other institutions um, that are not the University of Sydney. Um, we also um, uh, offer the, the program uh, to people who have already uh, earned their undergraduate degree or are eligible for it. And, and for, for high school students, of course, if you're a, a University of uh, Sydney student, um, you could also enroll um, in the diploma program uh, in addition to your uh, course of study with uh, special approval. So this would also be open to you um, if, if, you're, uh, if your hunger for, for languages and cultures uh, was still not fulfilled, you could, you could also consider doing a, a diploma. Uh, this just goes to, to, 
to point out that there are many options for you, many pathways, um, and you could choose one that, that suits your needs. Um, uh, some students would say perfectly, and I hope that would be the case for you too. Okay, so that was how, right? Um, and I think the how is important. We have uh, offices and officers and academic staff in place to help you um, get on the right path. Um, but I think this next question is even more important. Um, why would you want to study languages and cultures at the University of Sydney? Um, and so there are some, some practical reasons and, and maybe I'll share some personal reasons why I think it's, it's, it's so important to study um, languages and cultures and, and perhaps particularly at um, the University of Sydney. Um, well, we're ranked number one uh, for education and research in languages and cultures in New South Wales. And if, I'm, if I have my numbers and my, my information correct, we're um, ranked number two just behind another university in Australia that I won't name because we're planning on taking that number one spot in not too long. Um, but we have a very strong program. Um, our, offer, our offerings uh, in the School of Languages and Cultures, and of course, other, other schools um, integrate um, cultural understanding. Um, and they provide a remarkable depth and, and breadth. Um, we have specialized um, language teachers, linguists, of course, but many of our, our academic staff are also uh, specialists in many other fields. Like my, for example, my uh, degree is in Japanese literature uh, and I specialize in Japanese theater. And I also am a performer of a number of, of arts and uh, musical instruments um, from Japan. Uh, all of our staff um, are very active in, in their research lives. They publish articles and books, and they also like to, um, uh, uh, have students participate in their research and share their research with students and inspire them to conduct their own research, say, um, at the honors level or maybe the postgrad level. And, and maybe at one point you'll be interested in pursuing that path and hopefully uh, you will be. Uh, we have, of course, global study adventures. Uh, in other words, study abroad programs uh, to gain new skills in an immersive uh, uh, cultural context. Of course, it's, it's great to learn languages and culture right here at the University of Sydney, but it's also, um, I think, very important to, to actually go abroad and spend time immersed in the language and culture that, that you're specializing in. Um, in my case, I, I studied Japanese uh, in year one, and at the end of year one, I felt um, uh, I, maybe a little bit uh, disillusioned. Um, Japanese was very hard for me and I was thinking maybe this isn't for me, maybe I'll study Spanish after all because that was another one of my interests. Um, and then after year one I went to Japan for about I think it was three months and that changed everything for me. There weren't only university age people there, there were uh, young children, there were um, elderly people, there were um, people who uh, you know, had different backgrounds. There were people who had different abilities and it just really opened my eyes and made me want to study and know more. Um, and so our OLE programs, that's um, open learning environment. It, it allows you to go to um, really uh, immerse yourself and internalize language and culture. Um, so that's something we offer. That's another reason why uh, you'd want to study at the University of Sydney. And, and, and I think if, if we just kind of transcend our, above ourselves for a moment and think about what this all means, think about the bigger picture. What, do, um, what does language, what do languages and, and, and cultural competence do for us, right? What, what do these things teach us? What do they allow us to do? And I think one important thing is, is it teaches us understanding. It teaches us patience. It teaches us compassion for other people. Um, and I think in our world today, many people lack these qualities. And whether you're thinking you want to bring more of these qualities into your own lives or bring it into your work life, I, I think you could only benefit by becoming a truly global citizen. And what that means is that you're not only 
domestically and, and locally minded, you're, you, you have an understanding of the world beyond you. And you have the capacity to move outside of your own habitat and succeed in it. For example, through travel and through communicating and um, even caring about and maybe even loving others, who knows. Um, but becoming a uh, truly global citizen is something that I think um, is very important and a, and a big reason why you should pursue such studies and, and with us. Another reason uh, this answers the question of why, but um, this is the final question um, in, 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 our, um, in my talk today, where, right? Where can studying languages and cultures at Sydney take you? Well, um, you can imagine uh, where it might take you, um, but let's talk about a couple of our students. Um, Calvin Fernandez, for example, one of our, our star students. We have many star students, and and hopefully you'll be one of those stars shortly. Um, he's a current student, and um, he uh, has his courses in, the, in bachelors of education, and uh, and also he's a bachelor of arts student. So he's he's doing a couple of things. He's also studying Chinese and German. Um, and on the side, because he had further interests in language, he decided to learn. Italian and French through the open learning environment in country experience. That's the OLE program that I mentioned. Um, so he went uh, abroad uh, during his course to, to go um, have exposure to and learn more about Italian, French, and French language and culture. Um, so just if I can, uh, let me just stop sharing this screen for a moment uh, because I want to, let's see if I can access, I had something written on uh, a Word document here, just a couple of other things that Calvin had mentioned that I want to include. I think these are important to hear because they're not only from me, but they're from uh, Calvin. Uh, who um, is a student like 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 you are and 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 you will, you will be at the at, at the university level. Um, he benefited from his his learning his experience of learning Italian and French through the OLE in country units, um, and he was especially pleased with that experience that he could do that in addition to his coursework. Um, he was fully immersed in languages and cultures when he went overseas, um, and he felt that it helped. Uh, that the OLE in-country units were so accessible to him. Um, uh, they're open to all undergrads um, and for all beginners um, uh, and not necessarily students who uh, already know the language. Um, in his case, in Calvin's case, he chose the University of Sydney to do languages because, and th these are his words, um, he could learn through a, a number of options. Um, there were courses, for example, the majors, um, but also uh, minor options and, and a number of electives that he could fill his schedule with. So he could tailor uh, his, his um, experience to his own needs and his own ambitions. Um, and finally, he said the skills he gained from uh, language and culture studies at the University of Sydney helped him in terms of employability. And if I understand correctly, he's um, scheduled to begin a career as a high school teacher. Um, it also helped him gain a, a great deal of perspective for his future. And he said not only for his professional life as, as an employee or as, as an educator, but also his personal life. He, he developed new interests and new goals, ambitions based on what he gained through his university experience. Let me share. Uh, open this up again once so you can see. Next, I want to go to um, uh, another one of our students who has recently graduated, um, Christy Chunk. Uh, she's one of our alumna. Um, she's now a public affairs officer uh, for the Australian Public Service. Um, she received a diploma of language studies in 2016 in Korean studies. And this is, of course, in addition to her coursework. Um, she, had, she did a BA in Media and Communications, which she received in uh, 2019. Um, and she also majored in Chinese studies along with French and Francophone studies. 
um, it seems like um, these students are high achievers and they packed a lot into their schedules. And yes, they were hard workers. They had high ambitions, but many of our students who come to the University of Sydney, and again, they come from various backgrounds. They're not just from um, academic families or elite families. They come from a, a wide range of backgrounds and indeed sometimes from other countries. Um, so uh, some of her experiences, if I just uh, can share a, a, a few of her words, um, let me just close this really quick and look at my my, my cheat sheet because I want to get what they said right too. Um, she uh, Christy felt that her language and culture education at the University of Sydney helped her immensely uh, in terms of being an employable student um, and also becoming a high performing uh, uh, graduate student. She chose the University of Sydney for its strong reputation and because she wanted to learn from some of the world's leading scholars. Um, in her life, she feels strongly, and these are her words, that multilingualism, speaking more than one languages, uh, a few or several languages, and maybe some of you already speak a few languages, um, she feels that multilingualism opened the gateway to the world for her. And she feels that being a language and culture uh, she feels that being language and culture competent can help absolutely anybody, professionally and personally. And she goes on about um, how much she appreciated the options at the University of Sydney. Um, but that's Christy Chung and another student that we're, we're very proud of and who we like to stay in touch with. We, we like to stay in touch with all of our students and because we get great updates about all that they've achieved. Um, We've put some information in the chat for more stories about um, our languages and cultures alumni. So feel free to listen to their stories because oftentimes it's, it's easier to be in, inspired by other students than just say an academic speaking to you. Um, so check out their stories. Okay, um, so uh, that's about all of the uh, information I wanted to share with you uh, about um, studying languages and cultures at Sydney, the, the how, why, and where. Um, so thank you. And I guess with that, I'll also just add um, a, a couple of other things um, about myself, maybe just to kind of, um, I guess, to attest that I, I come from a background similar to a lot of our students. Uh, and uh, your, your uh, lecturers and your professors won't be too uh, far from you. They're, they're human beings too. But I had zero language background uh, when I st started studying at university. Um, and it was very difficult, but indeed it has changed my life a great deal. And I, I can say that it took me to Japan, first of all, um, and then it took me uh, back to America, where I'm originally from, and uh, it took me to postgraduate studies, but then it took me to Europe, I was there for a few years, then back to America, and then now I'm in, um, in, in Australia. So as you can see, it's taken me around the world, and um, I continue my language studies, um, including my Japanese studies. I'm not a native speaker of Japanese, but um, there's always a new plateau you can, you can rise to, to, to learn more. Um, I, I've studied Mandarin, I've studied mm -hmm. Korean, I've studied Spanish, and I'm thinking about taking on German and some other languages. And it's not that I'm particularly smart. I, I think it's rather the opposite. Um, uh, but I do enjoy studying and the opportunity to learn from other teachers, but also students like yourselves. I feel there's a lot for, for me. And I think a lot of our teachers would agree there's much for us to learn from you. And with that, I hope that we can um, uh, study together. And, and I, as I was saying, there, there, were, um, there are people from a number of backgrounds and my uh, family uh, you know, wasn't necessarily in a position to put me right through school. I know that university can be expensive. So, um, and that might be the case for you. And if it is, or it isn't, know that there are a number of funding opportunities through the University of Sydney and through um, the various um, areas, the departments themselves. Um, there are a number of scholarships that you can look into. Um, so pursue information on those as well, um, and you might find those helpful. Okay, um, with that, um, I'll also plug the next um, Wednesday webinar. Uh, that's coming up on the 10th of August at 4 p.m. Uh, the title of the talk is Investing um, Pompeii in Ancient Societies, and that will be by 
of renowned archaeologist Estelle Lazer. Uh, and you're welcome to join us for that too. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, it's, it's a pleasure to meet all of you, and I hope that soon we might be able to meet in person too. Um, take care of yourselves, be safe, and um, get in touch. I believe that we'll be um, taking some questions too. I believe some people have been taking, uh, putting questions into the Q&A. Um, so we'll be fielding those as well for you. So if you have any questions uh, in addition to those, uh, feel free to put those in and we'll do our best to, to, to answer those for you. Uh, I, I, I should be paying more uh, better attention to the chat window. Uh, there's a question. Am I able to study Japanese units electives in a non-languages related uh, course? Um, for example, Bachelor of Engineering. And if so, to what extent? That's a good question. Uh, the answer is yes. Um, if you have um, elective options in your course, uh, yeah, you, you can. Uh, take those, you can take Japanese. And in fact, some of our students are taking uh, Japanese from, from engineering and, and other courses as well. You would uh, just need to meet uh, or, or touch base with your academic advisor uh, in your course to make sure that that fits with everything. Um, one thing that we always want to do with our students is make sure they're on course to, to graduate uh, as scheduled. Um, we don't want to have you taking classes that might interfere with um, graduation or, or postpone it. But yeah, there, there are ways for you to study um, Japanese and other languages, even if you are not, say, in that Japanese major course. Okay, there's another question here. If we if we take part in the OLE and attend uni in another country by minoring in a language, are we able to study an unrelated major at said overseas university? Um, there are a number of uh, uh, you know rules per school and per department, but if I think about the students that I've advised and students of mine that have, have studied overseas. Um, let's see, I think the important part here is, are we able to study an unrelated major at said overseas university? Um, the advice that I give students is, um, if you want uh, to receive University of Sydney uh, credit points for the work that you do overseas, you're going to have to get approval for that, say through your exchange coordinator in, in your department. Um, sometimes students come to me and say, I want to study uh, this unit because I'm interested in it, but it doesn't really apply to my requirements that I need to get. So how can I do this? Can I take it? And sometimes the answer is if it can't be applied directly to your course, the answer would be no. Um, but we would try to find a way, um, maybe, it's just that the course description or the unit description in, in the home language uh, is, is not detailed enough. Maybe we could ask that university to provide more details that would say, okay, well, maybe we can accept this. So, so there are certain ways to, to negotiate those boundaries. Um, so again, this is something that would, would need to be discussed. And again, we have um, 
plenty of staff and oftentimes in, in departments, um, dedicated uh, exchange coordinators who could advise you um, locally as well. And if I've if I've left anything out, um, feel free. Any any of the, the the other staff on board can feel free to chime in. Great. All right, well, um, I think that should do it. It's been a pleasure. Um, and again, I, I look forward to seeing everybody at the University of Sydney. Thanks for having me today.